Hi, everyone. Thank you for dialing in. We are talking today with Daniel Carney from Good Life Financial Advice. Uh, Daniel is uh, located in Auckland, uh, but deals with clients nationwide. And we're just going to talk a little bit today about uh, what Good Life is seeing with their clients, what, what they do, what they're seeing with their clients, and how it relates to the property market. So thanks for um, uh, dialing in, Daniel. Uh, just, just tell us a little bit about what Good Life uh, does for their clients. And, uh, and yeah, just tell us. Sure. Well, we've been in business for 23 years. We help people really to become financially independent. That's our, I guess, our number one goal is to help people on their journey to not having to rely on the government or or an employer or whoever for their income. So there's various um, things along the way that we assist them with to achieve that goal. Uh, really, in terms of wealth creation, the main things that we are helping our clients with is residential investment property, something that we've been big on for you know the 23 years we've been around. Uh, we do have about $43 million under management of client money with a fund manager that we partner with. So we take that seriously as well. A chunk of that is KiwiSaver. Um, but funds under management is a key part of that journey as well. Of course, how clients structure their mortgages, uh, their insurances, everything is all wrapped up in that too. Um, but effectively, if I had to sum it up, we're helping people in a holistic way financially to become financially independent. Mm. Cool. Okay. So yeah, let's talk about the um, property side of things. Um, Cause there's been a few changes in the, the market recently and government likes to pick on investors. So uh, <laughs> it uh, seems like uh, that's been affected the most, but I guess the big one is probably, well, in my view, the big one is the tax changes that happen. I mean, it's been the LVR that was, you know, there was that prior to 2013, um, oh, uh, from 2013 rather, and uh, and it's now been re-implemented. But I think the big one was the tax changes and the treatment of interest tax deductibility. Um, what are your thoughts on that um, in terms of how it will affect the market and and will people look to new builds or um, you know ditch existing properties? What's your thoughts? Yeah, you know, I. <laughs> I mean, most of what we do, 99% of what we're doing with clients is new build uh, property anyway. So it's very rare. It's only in, in the cases of where we have to. Um, it's not a bad thing, but where we have to, and it's usually clients with a lower borrowing capacity that we're looking at existing property stock. Um, so, you know, when we've, when we've run the numbers, uh, admittedly it's on interest rates uh, sort of similar to what we're seeing now, it, it hasn't actually been that big a change for our clients who have got existing property. So I think the media um, can really, you know, sensationalize things and, and concern people or worry people more than is necessary. When clients talk to their accountants and look at the actual numbers, probably the changes to their financial or cash flows are, are probably quite minimal when they do the uh, calcs. So anyone that's concerned, I would encourage to, before they draw any negative conclusions, actually just do the calculations. Hey, if it is too too much of a change, well, it might be a time to look at selling and maybe reinvesting into new builds. But new builds for us has always been a preference anyway, for many reasons. They're more tax efficient, uh, easier to rent, easier to sell, less maintenance issues. Uh, chattels are worth more, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's, a, it's really just, I guess, um, helped our client base out and that what we're doing in terms of the fact that we're, we're pro new builds anyway. Um, but I don't, we haven't really seen much of a negative impact and uh, myself included in terms of what my wife and I have in, in terms of existing property. We haven't seen much of a negative true impact with the, with the recent changes. Um, but, Nonetheless, we are pro new builds anyway, and that's mostly what we're doing anyway. So they're exempt uh, to, to those changes. So it's really business as usual. And if anything, if anything, we're getting busier. Um, you know, I, look, I'm, I'm the same, right? From a mortgage broking perspective, 
new builds are easy to finance they're uh they're they're good you don't have those issues where suddenly you buy an existing house and you need to fork out ten thousand dollars for a new roof um so they come with a lot less risk for the for the client i think so yeah it's it's good and now those um well we don't know what those tax deductions are as of today we can we can hazard a guess from what they've put to the ird uh hmm. um but yeah it's there's certainly going to be some benefit uh, to new builds going forward so um yeah. yeah. And I mean, look, for us, it, it, it's quite easy for us to sum it up. And this is why new builds work well in this in this model is because, you know, we see it much the same as KiwiSaver. And what I mean by that is, you know, KiwiSaver just ticks away in the background. You're not phoning your KiwiSaver provider every five seconds and asking them to tell you what's going on and call you every time there's changes within the funds and blah, blah, blah. It's just something that's ticking away in the background that's there to help fund your retirement it's a wealth creation strategy for us property is the same we would like as much as possible to have it in that set and forget space so mm. with new builds that's a lot more likely because there's a lot uh less likelihood of issues with a new build than there is an existing property as, yeah. as you mentioned things have to be repaired or changed out or whatever so you know, at the front end, we have the right people helping to find and analyze it, and then out the back end, the right people to look after it. And and I stress to clients, that's not to take the power away from them. They can get as involved as they want, but it's more our clients are busy. They've got loads to leave. It's the, And we put it in the same category as KiwiSaver. It's just a thing to grow in value over a long period of time, 10 years plus, hopefully, and you just get on with your life. So yeah. it's another reason why we like new builds. Yeah. And and rental property managers as well. They take all that oh, yeah. that has it off. Yeah. I, I remember switching from doing the um management of investment properties myself to giving it to a rental property manager. And, and after about two years, I said to my wife, oh, do you think we should check on the property? Because <laughs> we hadn't yeah. heard anything. It was just running smoothly. It's, <laughs> oh, the to way me, to it's it. absolute no-brainer. And we we budget for all of that stuff. So the reports we give to clients, we budget for every fathomable cost you could think of because again we don't want them thinking about oh i've got to pay for this and that and where's that money coming from blah 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 um no we property manager lawyer accountant rates insurances maintenance it's all budgeted for so you just need to know what the bottom line is and that's it and just get on with your life and yes property management a good property manager because there's property managers and there's property managers yeah, <laughs> um, yeah you know they just help you just get on with your life yeah yeah so mm. I, I think uh, CoreLogic said that they had seen about a 20% drop off in investor activity, which isn't significant. It's <laughs> probably seasonal, to be honest. I don't know whether they seasonally adjusted those numbers or not, but um, mm. but uh, you'd probably find that winter just probably curled away 20% anyway. I um, I wonder if there's an opportunity there and, and keen to hear your feedback on whether um, uh, this is an opportunity, if there's a little bit of a dip of those super keen people, for people that are a bit fatigued, with hunting and you know if they're, if they're trying to do it themselves as well is this kind of an opportunity to jump in um and grab some grab some properties while the you know while the queues are a bit shorter uh yeah um I, I, well yes always i would say yes <laughs> <laughs> um uh, you know funny funny you say that because we're not seeing a drop off in fact we're 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 busy as we've ever been um you know i i, I was explaining to you um earlier that you know, for our clients, if we rock up to a property provider, whether that's a builder or a property search specialist or a developer or whatever, and, you know, we've got Joe and Jane blogs who have gone through a full process of of being, um, uh, you know, going through a financial planning process, understanding what property, what role prop property plays in that. Uh, then they're getting pre-approved. They're spat out the other end of pre-approved clients. Those those clients are gold for for people selling property. So a, a lot, you know, in a lot of cases, we are getting property stock that is not even hitting the market. It's it's being given to us because we have red hot clients ready to go. So I I really would feel sorry for people out there trying to do this themselves because property stock is difficult to come by. And thankfully, we've got many, many years of relationships where that strong relationships where we get given these opportunities and we we can fit clients in with with uh, their specific financial situation and needed cash flows etc 
um, we've got opportunities there. So, yeah, so funding, we're not seeing really a drop off. Um, and, and yeah, we, we hope, we'd like to hope that we're able to shuffle our clients to the front of the queue, um, keep them away from multi offers and, and, and auctions and, um, and, and competition, really, and let us have that stress and hassle of finding the right opportunities because we live and breathe that space. It's a big part of my job every single day to be, to be finding and sourcing and qualifying um, stock for our clients. So, yeah, uh, I'm yeah. not seeing any uh, drop, drop off, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, if I, um, you know, Tony Alexander does his mortgage broker uh, survey and things, and um, well, it's like, you know, anyone who turns up to a mortgage broker is by definition keen to buy. So <laughs> it's, yeah. it's always hard for a mortgage broker to tell the taste of the market because everyone that turns up is uh, keen to buy is spectacle the same. But but the, the numbers themselves aren't dropping off, I, I would agree. Noticeably dropping off, yeah. No, I, I don't think so. Stock, stock is certainly hard to come by, good stock. Mm. Um, and that's always an ongoing mission for us to find the right property in the right areas with the right rent. Uh, you know, that yield is um, something that we're all constantly chasing, um, not to the detriment of the growth of that property either. Um, that, that is, to me, more of a uh, mission, if you will, is, is finding the right property opportunities um, out there for clients um, and keeping that, that flow of stock coming through. But that's just, that just means I'm having to be on the, on the phone every single day to our providers, um, you know, finding out what's coming up in the future so that we can be earmarking that for future client uh, contact. Have you, have you seen any change in, you know, well, people who buy in Auckland are traditionally chasing capital gains or capital growth. Mm. Uh, they're definitely not chasing yield, that's for sure. Uh, mm. And have you seen sort of a change of people, what, what they're chasing, what they're asking for? Or does it tend to be that you guide them on on what you think is best in the market at the moment? How do you how do you sit with that? Yeah, you know what, that's a, it's a little bit of a loaded question for us because um, our clients are coming to us usually because they want help and they want advice. And we are pretty... Uh, we we feel strongly about the the kinds of things we're putting forward because they we're doing that for a, a very specific reason. So that's why we do avoid those areas like central Auckland because the yield isn't there. Um, what we're trying to balance out basically is four things with our clients. We want to be buying in the right area, but we want to be getting the right rental yield. So we've got to get good growth over. And for us, isn't a, this isn't a speculative thing. This is a ten year plus investment for our clients. They can hold it for however long they like, but we recommend for it to be a ten-year-plus thing. So we, we're earmark, you know, we, we know we're looking at areas that are earmarked for some nice gain over the next uh, ten years, with, that are going to give us a good rental yield, that is done in a good tax-effective manner. So that's really a twofold thing. That's new build property and who is your accountant, and that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the the last one is, can you afford it? in a best and worst case scenario. So we stress test everything we put in front of our clients. So, so our clients are, are not to pigeonhole people, but they are average, everyday, normal Kiwi mum and dad investors. They all earn very sim similar amounts of money, all got similar amounts of children, similar ages. So it's a very specific type of off offering that we tend to give those kinds of clients uh, and an advice piece that comes with that. Um, so we're more giving them advice around that kind of stuff. But right. uh, behind the scenes, it's a balancing act for us to make sure we're buying in the right area and getting the right amount of rental yield. And that is an ever-evolving space. Um, but that's, again, not the client's problem. That's our problem. <laughs> that's, that's your job, right? Yeah. Oh, look, I, I think I say this in every interview I do nowadays, that the days of DIY property investment are probably gone um and and uh, on your side finding property um in the right areas and things uh, but but also as you mentioned uh, with an accountant you know what what losses can you pass through how is the interest rate uh, you know how's the interest tax deductibility treated what's the bright line test i mean it's just not something you can do uh easily by yourself um, anymore. So re really interesting um, new world of property investment, which I think is a good thing, right? If you're plonking over $700,000, you should probably get some advisors <laughs> around you, right? Totally. Yeah. totally. People have fumbled along and got, got some capital gains along the, along the way, but it is, 
It is a minefield uh, out there. You know, even just the the property management side of things, you, you you don't do one little thing correct, and lo and behold, you can't claim on your insurances because something's happened and you didn't meet certain criteria. That's just one of many many things that you need to be making sure you're getting right. So yeah, I I, I would, as I said before, I would hate to be going out there and going this alone. Um, there are, you know, good advisors out there who can help in that space. And you really do want to have that good network around you. And I'm really big on that. Um, you know, a good property manager, a good lawyer, a good financial advisor or property specialist financial advisor, um, mortgage broker, ins risk insurance type person, um, you know, accountant, if I didn't say that already, these are people who you need to surround yourself by. You would be amazed the things we see on a weekly, if not daily basis. Even just yesterday, I uh, got an email from a client from one of the big brand, international brand um, accountant firms, uh, giving advice to a client which was which was blatantly wrong, uh, and and I, I was gobsmacked to be honest. Um, so. People have to be very careful. And this isn't to have a bitch and a moan about <laughs> other professions. We just want to make sure people are marrying themselves up with a good network who are experts in that space. Uh, they're not, oh, they've just heard there's a bright line to change and blah, blah, blah. No, oh, yeah, I'll just nah. put that in an email. <laughs> um, no, no, they need to know what they're talking about. And and really, though, that, that network is there to grow and protect your wealth. And they should be all working together, not mm. butting heads with each other. Uh, for the betterment of that particular client. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Hey, um, fi final thing, be difficult to do an interview without talking about interest rates. Uh, we were seeing 2.19, then one brave bank uh, decided to increase their profit this quarter, uh, bravely increase their profit. I actually don't know if that's true. They might have had a, a source of funds increase, but um, so 2.55 <laughs> and all the other banks followed. Uh, what What's your sort of, I mean, for starters, if anyone has been pulled out of the market because of a 0.36% increase, I'm very concerned for the fragility of their portfolio. They mm -hmm. shouldn't be exiting the market because of that. But it is an indication, right? So what, what do you think interest rates are, are going to do in the next sort of year or so if you, uh, if you had to graze into your crystal ball? Yeah, for sure. Um, so it's interesting because there's two sides to this. Um, there's the, you've got your ANZs and your ASBs who are giving these sub 2% build rates yes which you can get 90 percent lending on uh well obviously that puts a bit of a premium on top but you you can still get good low rates out there especially if you're doing builds uh and and, and as, as i say anz and asb have put their hands up in that space but yep you're right um you know interest rates are creeping up i uh i look i don't have a crystal ball <laughs> uh but I did, I did, funnily enough, I did put this to Tony Alexander in an email uh, about a month ago, because in my mind, my, my thought was, look, surely any rise, incremental rise in the OCR, when that happens, and that hasn't happened yet, uh, but the, the, the banks have just started putting their, their rates up, I guess, in expectation, it, surely it's only going to take small incremental rises in the OCR to really pull back the, the economy. Um, that was something that he agreed with. Now, I don't know whether he'd like me to be quoting him in, in this particular video, so I'll be careful. But but it makes sense to me that it, it, it wouldn't take too much of a rise of interest rates to really slow down uh, the, the uh, well, slow down people's spending uh, habits, which is really what the OCR is, is trying to do. It's trying to control, the infl uh, control inflation. We are seeing inflation, so interest rates are going to go up. But I, d I don't think they're going to go up um, either, A, quickly, like big jumps. I don't think so. Uh, I think they'll be incremental. Again, could be wrong. <laughs> um, and I don't think they're going to go up. So, so when, we, when we're doing stress testing with our property investment analysis reports that we do, we're using a 5% rate in our worst case modeling at the moment. Um, I feel comfortable with that. Uh, I, I would be surprised if rates go up much more than that. Now, I hope I'm not proven wrong there, but <laughs> I, it, it, there is the reason I say this is because there is so much debt out there now. So many people in New Zealand who have got a mortgage have got big amounts of mortgage debt because of the cost of buying 
property has gone up, 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 up. So there's a lot of debt. So surely it's only going to take very small incremental rises to have the whole of New Zealand mortgage population can, population collectively gasp and not go and buy that TV or Sparple or whatever it was that they were going to buy uh, and, and stop themselves because uh -oh, um, rates have gone up because they've got a, a lot of debt. So for those few reasons, I, I, I just think it's going to be uh, slowly put up to see what impact happens to the economy. And I can't see it going up much more than 5%. That's yeah, my... Um, yeah. non-economists a view of the <laughs> <laughs> my, my notoriously smoky crystal ball <laughs> my notoriously inaccurate crystal ball uh yeah it, um I'm, i feel the same yeah it's um five percent a lot right like that's double what it is now so i think there'd be some people who would be responding uh to quite a bit at the five percent um and and for clarity i think we're talking over a three or four year period, I'd be very surprised to see a one year rate at 5% in the next year. Um, I mean, yep. you've got the 0.75% COVID kind of relief drop of that on the OCR that they did um, just post the lockdown. Mm. Um, you could see that disappearing, <clears throat> disappearing reasonably quickly. Yes. But um, beyond that, it would have to be an external cause, I think, like um, inflation or, or some sort of international events uh, that was causing our OCR to go up, not mm. property. And they've got so many other levers on property with LVR and, mm. and uh, DTIs, um, <laughs> which mm. they hopefully don't introduce. Um, mm. But yeah, I think that they can control the market other ways. But yeah, all right. no, that's great. And to reiterate, that was uh, all um, pie in the sky guessing and not uh, do not make your financial decisions based on this conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. But just 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 quickly, um, it's it's interesting though. Just in, you know, anecdotally, uh, when we when we're running numbers on property, when we're doing our best and worst case modelling, the the properties we're seeing at the moment are putting probably about uh, fifty to one hundred and fifty into a client's pocket every week, cash flow positive, net. That's net after all expenses are taken care of. When we blow out those interest rates, you, it's probably going to cost a client somewhere between about 200 to 250 a week when we're around about that 5% interest rate mark. So those are the differences. We're seeing cash flow positive uh, with what we're doing around about that sort of, as I say, 50 to 150-ish mark through to costing a client 150 to 250 per week top up. So if a client feels well yeah i could do that that's affordable um well then that's that's about what we're thinking is a realistic worst case modeling for the types of things that we're predominantly getting our clients into at the moment yeah that's great mm. excellent hey well thanks for um dialing in if uh, if you want to catch up with you or have a look at your website what's the website name man um it's goodlifeadvice.co.nz goodlifeadvice with a c.co.nz uh, they can in, uh, email us info at goodlifeadvice.co.nz or we even have 0508 Good Life. How cool is that? So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so they can do any of those things. Yeah. Yeah. Funnily enough, 0508 Mortgage was taken a lot earlier than Mortgage Lab was around. So, yeah, well <laughs> done again. Uh, yeah, good, good phone number. Hey, well, thanks for that, mate. And, uh, and appreciate you dialing in and we'll talk to you soon. Now, my, my, my pleasure. Thank you, Rupert. I appreciate it. Cheers. Thank you.